Oh, hello. It's Friday, he says. The 19th of January. And you know where we are. We're at Castaway Key. Yes, hello. Welcome back to Richard Vlogs Disney. My name's Richard. I make Disney vlogs, obviously. Uh, Roberta is currently drinking coffee like two decks below me because I've come up to take some pictures. But yeah, welcome to Castaway Key. It's a kind of semi-sad day because it's our last day on the Disney Fantasy and it's our first seven night cruise. So it's, we thought it would be easier. You know, you've been on the ship for longer, so it's okay. You had a long time. If anything, it's made it worse because we're now even more comfortable on the ship uh, that we don't want to leave. If you have clicked into this video and this is your first time watching, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you click subscribe so you get kept up to date with any future videos that come out. Uh, and go back and watch some of our older vlogs. We have plenty of Disney Cruise Line content and Disney content on the channel. Let's spin you around and let me show you what we got going on here. I mean, we know this island so well, don't we? But it's always nice to see it. Now, right now, it is... One second, he says, as he looks at his watch for weather information and it gives him a bunch of notifications. And it doesn't give him the weather information. I think it's something like 25, 24, 25 degrees. So we, we've sort of... It sounds ridiculous because it's January, but it's starting to get a little bit cooler as we've come further north back towards Florida. They have said that this lovely blue sky is not going to last the day. Um, Apparently in the early afternoon we should get some change of direction of the wind which may blow in bad weather basically. Uh, there is a cold front coming through Florida because when we arrive back in Port Canaveral tomorrow it's supposed to be five and I say that with a single hand, five degrees which is absolutely n like nuts. We might not get as much of a full day here. Uh, if you've watched our castaway vlogs before uh, you know that generally when we're here we don't have very many plans. We like to explore, we like to walk around, we like to go down to Serenity Bay, have some lunch. Uh, I want to get one of the frozen drinks. Probably, preferably not in an Olaf sipper at <laughs> this cruise. But um, there's a few things that we want to get on the island. And we'll just have a really nice explore around. Uh, have a look at what merchandise they have. We have no port adventures planned here. If you'd like to see a a vlog where we did a port adventure at um, Castaway Key. I recommend you go back and watch our Disney Wish series of vlog from when we were in Castaway Key because we did a port adventure on that day. We did a, a glass bottom boat tour, which was very cool. I'm gonna go back downstairs. I'm gonna get my coffee. I'm gonna finish my coffee. We're gonna start wandering off onto the island. We got here about 7.30ish. Um, everyone started racing off at about 11. 11, sorry. Uh, at about eight, uh, we like to take it chill. Like there's no for us, there's no need. We're not out there rushing to get that perfect beach spot. We're just here to have a nice chill time, and that's what we're gonna go and do. And welcome to Castaway Key. Uh, we got off at the forward gangway. I thought it was forward and aft, but it's not. It's forward and midship. So actually, it didn't make any difference really at all. Uh, I just wanted to have a look at the front of the ship because I always like looking at the ships <laughs> um, I'm a nerd leave me alone um, but yeah it's just nice to look at the front of the ship they're currently up painting obviously uh, always painting always cleaning that's why the ships always look so good so it actually turns out that there are gang gangways at every uh, staircase um, so we could have come down any doesn't matter obviously listen for announcements if you come when you come Let's manifest this when you come to Castaway Key. This is the new fence that you will get if you your family name on when you complete 50 plus sailings. I mean, most of these have been sailing for a long time. Like, you know, you look at most of them, it's early 2000s. This one's nuts sailing since 2017 how do I get adopted by the Kaplans <laughs> yeah most people on there is like sailing since 2000 so that's 24 years 50 cruises you're averaging just over two cruises a year which if you live in America you live in Florida maybe you make use of like Florida residents discounts on certain three on four night sailings you can do that it's not insanely out of the realms of possibility to do 50 cruises in 25 years fine like that's that's possible 
50 cruises with Disney Cruise Line in seven years. Bearing in mind that Disney Cruise Line wasn't sailing for two years because of COVID. So you've done 50 cruises in five years. You have done, on average, 10 cruises a year. That's like a cruise every five weeks. Like, that's it. <laughs> I mean, oh, you would if you could, right? Anyway, you know where we are. We're up at the picture spot, which is just to the left as you get off the ship. Uh, because it's time to get a... Uh, stern photo a new one to add to the collection if you walk rather than take the tram down to like the main um shopping area there is also another really nice place to get photos at the back and then obviously the beaches as you go as well uh yeah uh, i need to go and take a picture of that thing on the friends i'm still amazed by it so this is the other photo spot you can get a nice picture of the ship underneath the arch there uh, there's always a cast member there obviously taking photos for you if you so want but that's where you get your nice pictures of Dumbo or Sorcerer Mickey or Rapunzel or Goofy or in the very very rare instance they bring the wonder here Donald Duck Welcome to Castaway Key Obviously tram service is available we always like to walk to you know the path it's nice one to get your steps in two you get these views don't disappear mirrored there it is anyway you, you know you know what the view is um, you get nice views of the ship as you walk around and it's just nice to explore the island a little bit more than just seeing it as you drive past it but there is tram service available it'll take you to there's two stops on the main line that will take you down to the main shopping like area and then you can transfer on to another shuttle that will take you down to Serenity Bay uh, normally when we come here, or every time I think we've come here, I've said, oh, next time we should hire some bikes. Uh, it'll be nice to cycle around. There's a lot of cycling paths that go around the island. Uh, I would today, but um, I don't know if you can see, the cloud is really starting to bubble up um, over there, and I have a feeling that is what is going to start making its way in. So the worst thing you want is to be out, like, on a bike somewhere in the Castaway Key wilderness to suddenly be caught in you know the kind of storms that you can get here so perhaps not this trip maybe another one where the weather looks to be staying blue skies for the entire day the first beach you reach at scuttles cove is a really nice place to again get a beautiful view of the ship take a picture if you want it's nice to be able to take pictures with the ship in the background at a decent sort of size obviously the further down the beach you get the further away from the ship the smaller it's going to look but this is a nice opportunity or a nice view of the ship from another angle. Goofy is currently out. He's goofing uh, on the beach here at Scuttles Cove. So Scuttles Cove is also where you'll find Mount Rustmore, which is the very famous like Disney Cruise Line or Castaway Key photo spot with the boys and the, you know. Um, and there's normally characters like meeting here. Obviously check the Navigator app. They change throughout the day. And like they also will just change. You'll be in line for Mickey for example and you'll get two from the front and they'll be like right Mickey's going away now it's going to be Pluto and you don't really have a choice in that but that's fine you need to meet the characters and this is like one of the best photo spots for it talking to Mickey he is currently meeting here this is also where you'll hit the first Disney Cruise Line like official shop so this is Disney Cruise Line merchandise run by Disney you can pay here with your like onboard card we obviously navigate straight to the pins we saw this one again sorry the camera flicking the camera does it automatically i can't control it um we saw this one then we saw it was for the 5k which neither of us have run so you can do that the morning of like when you arrive they they they, they run it in the morning there will be a few like castaway key specific pins here it's another one just there sometimes they have them on the ship sometimes they don't so, you know, this is a good place to, to always double check. And, you know, you can get things like T-shirts and stuff. All of the Castaway Key branded stuff you're going to find here. There you go. Some more Castaway Key branded stuff. Yeah, I haven't seen any spirit jerseys either. Water bottles. T-shirts. It's not the only uh, like retail location on the island, like the Disney retail location. So 
if you don't find anything you like there, you can keep walking down. Make sure that you check the others. There is also the like local Bohemian shops which sell local goods. Now those are, yeah, you can't charge to your room. You need dollars for that. So if you do want to shop from that, uh, and if it is your only like Bahamas stop on your cruise, such as our cruise, it's the only place in the Bahamas you've come and you want to get something from there, then make sure you bring dollars off. And here we are at the local stores. So this is where you'll come and get your Bahamas souvenirs. We came down to the Heads Up Bar because last year I found some old pictures of my first visit to Castaway Key and I will try my best to like impose like the picture on top of that view so you can see the difference from 2000 to now. I'm trying to find some other places. I have a few pictures. Ooh, where's my drink? Uh, <laughs> I have a few pictures of old Castaway Key, some like 24 years ago, um, that I'm looking around specifically for those buildings. I don't see them, and there's a possibility that they're not here anymore, right? That things have changed. It's not exactly the same as it was back in the day. But I'll put the pictures up anyway on the screen now. There's me and Mickey, and tell me that isn't slightly nightmare fuelish <laughs> uh, over by Mount Rossmore where we were talking before. And then um, a few other pictures around the island, and you can just see the difference if I now bring you back and spin you round, like how much more grown everything is. And obviously, it's 25 years later but it's just interesting how young it looks as a place and now it seems like it's always been here exactly like this. We also came down to Wandering Oaken's trading post, ooh, and sauna, um, for some slushy drinks, that one there. Um, but this is where you'll find the Sand Olaf. We found the other retail, um, place and we found a castaway key spirit jersey that is really cool I like it a lot and just here is also where you will get the trams around so we're gonna get the tram down to Serenity Bay now basically as soon as we got down to Serenity Bay it was lunchtime so we came to get lunch um, if you've ever watched my vlog some Serenity Bay barbecue before you know it's just a plate of meat if you've been watching this series throughout, you'll know that there's like some odd protocols in place that are almost COVID-like. Um, so like the ice cream not being self-serve on the ship. No physical menus in the, um, in the restaurants. Every party being on their own table in the main dining rooms as well, rather than like group tables, um, which is fine for us. We always request a private table anyway, but um, the barbecue was also not self-serve. So they're evidently, at least for the fantasy at the moment, is a little bit more precaution. I don't know if that's because it's like seven night cruises, so obviously you have a lot more time together than like on a three night where if you get sick, the chances of you like infecting other people are smaller because you're not around them for long enough. Um, whereas on a seven night, you're together for seven days. So if one person gets sick, a lot of people will get sick. Um, or if it's because of the time of year, we are cruising in January, people are more ill now. So it might be that as well, but just it's not, it's not affected anything really, like nothing has been bad because of it, but it's just a reminder that there, there's a lot more caution in cruising these days than there used to be. After lunch, we came down to Serenity Bay for a bit. This is Serenity Bay. It is beautiful, obviously. I mean, just look at this water. It is so clear. And it's so clear for, well, forever. On our previous visit to Castaway Key, we did the Glass Bottom Boat Tour, which I uh, was talking about earlier and said, if you want to watch that, watch our Wish vlog series. But they, um, the water is insanely clear. I remember you could just see down so far, including like an old iPhone that someone had just yeah. dropped and evidently had never been able to get back. But obviously there's, you know, tens of thousands of fish just out there. The, starfish. All the starfish. The colours are just insane. Apart from the lunch that they serve to you down at Serenity Bay, there is also a bar down here. Obviously, being an adult's only beach, it would be weird if they didn't have the bar here. But I love the, this bar, how it's like the old aircraft hangar, because to get to Serenity Bay, you have to go down the old runway. 
Just off of the runway at the Serenity Beach end is the hiking and biking trail. It's even a place here to leave your bikes if you do rent one to get to the beach. The trams down back to the Pelican Point are about every 10 to 15 minutes. It does say on the um, times board that the times are bohemian time, meaning whenever we want, basically. Um, but you can walk, and that's what we've decided to do. It's not very far, probably about a kilometre, but it's just a nice opportunity to walk along the old runway and uh, you know take a look at the planes and stuff on either side. It's also a nice chance to walk off any remaining lunch. Like, here it is, the old runway. It does have Castaway Key written on the runway, you may have noticed on the video on the way down. There are a few like airline, like airliner contrails in the sky, so evidently some planes fly over. It would be, it would be really interesting actually to be able to see it from like an airplane. And I, I wonder, obviously without, you'll know it now because it's written on the runway, but I wonder if you'd be able to like know that it was Castaway Key from the shape. Have you been here enough? Walking back to the ship is a good opportunity to have a look at Mount Rushmore with no characters here. There is some slightly more nastier looking clouds coming in. Uh, although it feels like just beyond them is probably more blue sky, but they did say in the afternoon that there would be a change in weather. <laughs> Looks nice behind me though, so we'll keep the camera this way. I've just spotted this building which is in one of the old pictures that I was talking about earlier. I'll put it up on screen now. Obviously we're looking at it from a much different angle, but you can see that that covered area has evidently been built in the subsequent 23 or four or five years. I can't quite remember exactly how long, but all of these trees here are just so mature now in comparison to the picture. We just got back to our room and it's sad time. Uh, the luggage tags have been delivered. No, no, <laughs> don't make us. <laughs> uh, but it's cool. We got Mickey this time. Never had Mickey before. So uh, another one to add to the collection. We are not going to the show tonight because it's Believe, which we've seen. Um, oh, that's loud outside because they're doing some work. Um, we have seen Believe maybe three or four times and we're okay with skipping it on this on this sailing. So we're not going to go to the theatre tonight. So that will give us some a bit of additional time to pack. Um, yeah, check in for our flight tomorrow. Yeah, I've never gone straight to the airport to go home, but that is what tomorrow is. It is our trip travel back to uh, travel back to England day. So, but yeah, we need to pack tonight, get checked in, do everything. But <sighs> don't want to go. Roberta's gone down to our room to get ready, get changed, you know, just change out of her stuff that we were wearing when we were on Castaway. I'm going to use it as a chance to walk around and have a look at the art on the ship because there's so much art on the walls, especially in like all of the staircases and I keep thinking I need to go around and look at what I like uh, and I keep forgetting and really I have to do it now because we're running out of time, right? So uh, I thought I'd take you along and show you some of my favourite bits, the bits that I've seen on this cruise. I'm like, I like that, I like that and there probably will be a lot because I like a lot of it but I'll show you my favourite bits. The art often reflects what is on the deck or around the ship. So I am currently on deck 12 aft. And this is where you'll find Paolo and Remy. So this beautiful Ratatouille based piece makes sense here, right? Because one, Remy, two, food. Yeah, it's lovely. Between deck three and four, this is like the largest space between the decks. So you get massive art pieces such as this one from Peter Pan. And these are just, they're just grand. They're just so large, right? So they, they're really easy to spot and you see them around a lot. I really like this one. Like, it's so big. It's impossible to get any angle to take an actual photograph of it. So really all you get is, all you can do is look at it and video it. Anyway, I'm on deck three now, but I'm gonna go up to deck four, walk through the promenade, along the promenade, go in at the midship entrance and then do that staircase get my steps in it's good it's filling my filling my rings interrupting the art tour for a moment um one cruise i've always been somewhat interested in is the transatlantic uh it's 13 nights depending on what way you do it i'm thinking from america to europe rather than from europe to america uh, i think the may 
time frame of it suits a transatlantic voyage better than the October <laughs> back the other way, which could be quite cold. Um, but I was never particularly sure if it was too long, 13 nights, it's a long time on a ship. But then having done this now, obviously before we'd only ever done four nights and I knew that wasn't enough, at least I would be happier with longer. And then having done seven nights now, I'm like, no, I can do longer. Obviously, <laughs> oh no, I can do longer on holiday. Stupid like thought, but it's still something, you know, on a ship, obviously completely weather dependent, crossing the Atlantic is a lot different to sailing around the Caribbean but it's I think of the 13 nights it's got something like six or seven sea days so it's like half at sea half in port um, and the sea days are very grouped because it leaves from Fort Lauderdale goes somewhere um, I think I'm not sure exactly where and then you're just across the Atlantic but you know what I could do it <laughs> happily happily it also um, is often the cheapest per night sailing that you'll find so it can be expensive because it's 13 nights but if you break it down as price per night it's often the cheapest because you don't go to many places it's just sea days it's a relocation of the ship so um, yeah it's in May it's currently January and to be honest when this uh, vlog goes out it will probably be April so probably a bit soon for this year <laughs> but um, suddenly it's very tempting I guess really no talk about art on the ship would really be complete without a visit to the Vista Gallery in deck 2 midship so right outside of Enchanted Garden uh, this is the purchasable art um, there's some really nice pieces here so some of it you can also purchase in the shops but it's a it's it's nice to come and look at the pieces in frames and sort of see them all so definitely worth visiting coming down and having a look on the vista in the vista gallery going back to moving pictures i don't like these ones specifically because they move uh, i like the style of the like old classic um travel poster so I would like these even if they didn't move the fact that they move is just a bonus this is in the deck 8 forward elevator lobby we also have the Mexican Riviera um, moving picture as well come on try and get it to activate they don't all they don't always play but anyway you get the idea because I like it even though it doesn't move now in the deck 7 forward elevator lobby I have not seen these on any other ship feel free to correct me in the comments if they are there but there are construction images of the ship and I live for this um, so the keel laying of the fantasy and um, just on this one it blows my mind that I am currently stood on that thing that is inside a building <laughs> like you look at that and you go oh that's a, you know it's a boat in a building and then you realize that this thing holds 4,000 people. It's like having the Empire State Building be inside. Uh, Mayor Werft, where the ship was built. Ship hull number 688, the dream being 687, due to pub 687 in the after hours area. And then finally, the last piece being added to the front. Not every piece will have like a description or a little panel. Um, some of it's for Disney Cruise Line, some of it's not. Oh, excuse me, that's one day 12. I've just come up 12 flights of stairs. Uh, there is a little hidden piece though that I really like. So we're going into Edge, uh, the Edge stairwell at least. I've changed the ultra wide camera to really capture this piece because Wally is a film close to my heart and the use of like the size of this piece because this is about a deck high this piece of art and how you have Eve flying up in the corner there being watched by Wally I think it's a shame that this piece isn't somewhere where more people will see it this is in the midship uh, lobby between deck four and five this is genuinely possibly my favorite piece on the ship 
of course the theming of Disney Cruise Line is all about like the golden age of ocean travel in the original four ships. So this here with mirrored <laughs> the steam train, obviously Walt, massive fan of steam trains. That's why we have steam trains in nearly every Disney park around the world. And the ship as well. And let's just have a, look, a closer look at the ship. So clearly the fantasy, just very art deco or art nouveau because it's the fantasy. There's similar pieces on other Disney Cruise Line ships. Pretty sure I saw one similar on the Wish around the 1923 kind of area. But that for me is probably my favorite piece on the entire ship. And then on deck four outside the balcony entrance for the Walt Disney Theater are pictures of the man himself. And you know, we wouldn't be here were it not for him, so I love these images. And on the other side of the stairwell, we have some more Walt-related imagery. And then finally, one very big Walt-related image. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Yeah, there we go, it's so big, it's hard to get on camera. And that's it, my favorite art pieces, not normal vlog content, um, some of you may have skipped, a lot of you may have gone, I'll go and watch something else. But if you did watch, I hope you enjoyed it because there's so much great art on all of the ships uh, and I have definitely missed a lot. But it's also very easy to walk past as you race from activity to activity. So this is a nice reminder to slow down, enjoy your time on a Disney cruise if you are coming on one and just have a look at what's around you. We've come up to deck, I don't know why it looks at my watch like it tells me what deck we're on. Uh, we've come up to deck 13 because now I look at my watch, it is like a couple of minutes before it's time, the all aboard time. Uh, apologies if the audio is not great, I've taken my mic out in preparation of horn action. Uh, but looking down, I can't see anybody that is uh, racing to get back on. Uh, they're still loading stuff, so we're not quite ready to go, but they are also starting to walk down to where we're tied on, so we are we are getting there. It's nearly time to leave. No. We haven't had bad weather at all on this cruise, and even the sea hasn't been awful, but it's not been like this. It looks, it's like a lake out there right now. It's, it's as flat as it can get, I think. Well, that was the last gangway just bought in, so any minute now, I'm just, oh, the ropes have started to be removed, so we are, we are starting to go. Right, <laughs> I'm stupidly emotional because um, you could probably see them down in the uh, down on the on the port, right? The the crew or the Disney cast and crew that live on the island and maintain the island, and you know their work really begins now because the dream will be here tomorrow. And assuming this weather doesn't stick they will be expecting their day at Castaway. 
but um, they bow. They took a bow. And, <laughs> oh, and everyone on the side of the ship was, um, was like cheering and applauding them like from their balconies and from the promenade and stuff. And oh, okay, I'm being silly now, but it, it uh, yeah. Uh, it may be a bit cloudy that way, but we're kind of getting a sunset. We're getting some of golden hour before the sun, uh, sorry, before the cloud steals the rest. So after saying earlier we weren't going to go and watch Believe now, we've changed our mind <laughs> and we're now going to watch uh, Believe. We've decided to come to the upper floor, thank you. I just thought I'd take a little bit of video before showtime because Obviously, I don't really have a show in the theatres because we can't film the shows for good reason. Um, but yeah, this is the Walt Disney Theatre on the fantasy and the dream. I know we weren't gonna go originally. Sorry, sorting my hair always. Um, we weren't gonna go originally, and then because we've seen it before, but it was really good because the genie character that is the, one of the main characters in that show. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, obviously, played up to the fact that Aladdin is also on this ship, so it's like I'm back again, and that led to some like really good jokes and funny moments. But it's a great show. Um, we are gonna try and continue our quest to win a Disney Cruise Line medallion. It is 2010's music trivia time. Oh, Disney Fantasy Cruise Line! I don't do it today. No Small presents 2010's music trivia. Now, everyone think they got this one. Right? Then we go a room full of winners. That's exactly what happened. And like everyone said the exact same thing every single night when they came in. All right. If you're ready for number two, say yeah, you. Yeah, you. Here we go. Number two. Show the, show the people. Number seven it is. No? Never heard that song before in our entire lives. We've had better. We're missing what? Two? Three. Well, we have tied. Moving on. We're missing two. We've Free missed answers. a title. You're ready to come We're on not the sure. Dance. What and title are we sure If you feel you need to sing, Oh, yeah. No, that's not right hand. either. We're definitely missing three. And there's one it's that we weren't sure crowd if crowd we've got the right song. But yesterday, the person that won 2000's music trivia was perfect. So. We were. One day, one day. And here we go. Let me hear you clap those hands for number seven. Still never heard of it. Edward Sheeran. Why are you full naming Ed Sheeran? Edward Sheeran. Okay, we didn't win, but there was a bonus question that the Swifty nailed. <laughs> You finally got it! She finally got her medallion and all she had to know was the exact length of Taylor Swift all too well 10 minute Taylor's version. Trick question, it's not actually 10, 10 minutes, minutes, it's 10 minutes and 13 seconds. She knew it to the second. Who's, who said useless knowledge never comes in handy? It's not useless knowledge. Because it got you this. <laughs> We quickly came back to our room just before dinner and we've come back to a stingray on our bed with more like i know obviously you get chocolate every night but we've been getting more than our just two pieces of chocolate each she's given us so much chocolate on this cruise 
<laughs> like and it like could, <laughs> I, I know it sounds ungrateful but we just don't like this chocolate maybe i'll take it to work and for one final time it's dinner time we finish in royal court so for the final time for the final dinner uh, on this one we start with shrimp roberta has exactly the same and so we next have the lobster tail. I've never had lobster on Disney Cruise Line before, but I'm very much looking forward to it. It was expertly tailed by our head chef. Uh, Roberta has the same. Uh, I have double entree ordered. This is the venison, because I, again, haven't had venison before on Disney Cruise Line. It's potato croquettes. Roberta's going to get straight in with those, but I'm really looking forward to the venison. And then finally for dessert, Roberta has gone for a raspberry creme brulee. And I have gone for good old faithful apple pie with ice cream. Another wonderful dinner. I don't know what I expected with it being a seven night cruise. I've never done a seven night cruise before. So um, we've had a different menu every night, which has obviously been great because I expected that they would just rotate the same one you know, for each restaurant. But no, each restaurant has had a different menu every night, which means we've got to experience some new Disney Cruise Line food. Um, for me personally, the veal trio on the, somewhere in Enchanted Garden. Go back and watch the vlogs, you'll see where it was, was the standout. Anyway, we're going back to our room now. We need to pack. She's still happy. She's still been wearing it. She's wearing it, wearing it all through dinner. Um, we need to go back and pack now, but, um, I'll, we'll sign off when we get upstairs. <laughs> I got that on camera. <laughs> well, this is a bit awkward because I filmed a bunch of stuff out of order because I've already filmed my outro, but I forgot that it's like the sad bye-bye party like thing in the atrium. So now I'm going to film that. So it's all out of order. It, 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 what does it matter? Well, a very good evening, everyone, and welcome to the heart of the Disney Fantasy, our lobby atrium. I'm Sean, your assistant cruise director, and I have one question for you, and that is, have you enjoyed your Pixar Day team cruise vacation? <laughs> well, we didn't think it might be quite right to send you home without one final visit from Mickey and the Game. Do you want to see Mickey and his friends? <laughs> now keep it going for everyone's best mate, that's Pluto! Good night, everyone. So that was the 
sailing away. We are sailing away, as in we are going away. <laughs> uh, like, sad goodbye party. I don't really ever go to that. Anyway, this is all filmed out of time. So, as I said, so let's go back in time for me, forward in time for you. Cue the outro. Nine flights of stairs after dinner is not the one. <laughs> um, I won't miss that. If I'm thinking of things I won't miss, it's that. Um, I just, I've got the TV on the bridge report channel because it's music. And I also just like that it sort of it gives you information like how fast you're going, etc. And, um, but it just came up that we've traveled over 2000 miles on this cruise. And that's by far the longest cruise we've done, not just in days, but in distance. I said it a little bit earlier about how now we've done longer, I want to do even longer. <laughs> It just goes, yeah. Live on, live on the Disney fantasy. It obviously just shows that it's work for Disney. Yeah, I was making the point that we've gone to three new places as part of this cruise, and that has made it even more special as we get to experience new things. And it's been a wonderful cruise, my favourite cruise I've ever done. And I will never, ever not be a promoter for Disney Cruise Line. Anyway. We are at the end of a series, and for the first time uh, at the end of the series, there are no, well, there are plans for the next one. I've just told you that there are plans for the next one, but that's obviously a significant point of time at the moment. And there are no plans and no plans to make plans. We might be on a little Disney break for a while. We were on a break. Um, but who knows, with me, Roberta will attest that I make decisions very quickly sometimes so who knows watch this space but it doesn't mean that the channel's going to go dead uh, i've still got plenty of things to make videos about opinions helpful tips things like that so if you do like any disney content please make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on because as soon as we do come back we want you to be here as well um smash, that like. smash the like button if you have enjoyed the vlog because you know it helps us out a lot um and leave comments say hello it's always nice to talk to people about disney in the comments but for the last time, for now, from the Disney fantasy, we'll see you whenever the next one is. Bye. Bye.